Welcome to the video series of OpenYAN. In this series of videos, we have been discussing about computer architecture and memory design in general. And in this particular video, we will be discussing about caches, the optimization that is there available in cache memory and the side effects of those optimizations. In the last videos, we have discussed about von Neumann architecture and the parallels that are there between the uh, servers and the mobiles. In this slide, we'll just discuss about how the memory is aligned in both the servers and the mobile. We have CPU registers, the level 1, level 2 and level 3 caches in computers. And then we go for the RAM memory and then the storage. Similarly, in present day mobile handsets or smartphones, we have the CPU registers and we have the level 1 and level 2 caches. And then we go for memory and then the storage. The only thing is that the CPU and the storage it starts with the fastest to the slowest and then the smallest to the biggest. There are various basic optimization mechanisms that are available for each and every memory designer. The first is that of having a larger block size. Larger block size means I can have more words, more bytes, more data crammed into one single page and then that can be cached. Instead of having smaller, ma many smaller pages, I'll have fewer, bigger block sizes or pages. This helps in getting the data as is needed and it also helps in the next point that is the higher associativity. So whenever uh, data is fetched, all the associated data and the injections are also fetched and placed in the cache in the hopes that there will be a higher hit ratio rather than going and fetching it again. The third part is about the multi-level caches. We have already seen how the we have level 1 and level 2 and level 3 caches. So these are the ways in which we Im try to improve the hit ratio and have the data available for the CPU for immediate use. The fourth point is about read ahead of write. When there is a data that is needed by the CPU for processing, for reading, then it gets a higher priority rather than that of writing it back into the buffer or writing it back into the storage. So these are the basic optimization mechanisms that every cache in, uh, designer follows so that there is a higher hit ratio and a lower miss penalty. There are different advanced optimization mechanism available for any memory designer. The these are smallest first cache, web prediction, pipeline access, non-blocking caches and multi bank caches. The first one of smallest first cache follows the principle of KISS. Keep it simple silly. So, if there is a cache that has to be searched, if it is small and simple, then it is always easier to come up with an answer of whether there is a hit or a miss. That is the reason why the smallest first cache is being there. If there is a hit, then the time in needed for fetching the data from a hit also, also reduce. If there is a miss, then well, we'll get to know that there is a miss sooner. The second one is that of wave prediction. If x greater than y, fetch x1, else fetch y1. In this case, the system does a wave prediction and decides whether to fetch x1 or y1 and that is important so that the cache is being filled and uh, CPU gets the data as is needed. Pipeline access, we all know about pipeline access. In This is the case wherein a request is being sent and as when, when the data is being fetched, the second request is also being done. So it's a pipeline access uh, makes use of the principle of um, keeping all the devices engaged so that the data is being fetched faster and sooner. Non-blocking caches. We have seen that there is a level 1 and level 2 and level 3 caches. As is the case when a level 1 cache is being searched and similar at the same time, at the parallel time, level 2 and level 3 caches are also being searched. So in this case, so if there is a miss in the L1 cache, then the time needed for searching and coming up with an answer from of a miss in the L1 is being used to search the data in the level 2. So everything goes in parallel. That's the case of non-blocking cache. Then the third one is that of multi-bank cache. Instead of treating cache as a one single entity, we split it and search it in multiple banks so that we can search it in four different places instead of one single place. It's like having an entrance to a room from three or four doors rather than one single door. There are furthermore optimization mechanisms available like critical word first, merging the writes, compiler optimizations, hardware prefetch and compiler prefetch. Critical word first. As and when the data is available for processing, it is being given back, given to the CPU instead of trying to fill the page first completely and then giving it to the CPU. This makes the data available to the CPU faster. Merging the writes. Let's assume that our cache is dirty by 10 bytes and then 
the CPU gives another 20 bytes to writing. Instead of writing it twice, first time by 10 bytes and then by 20 bytes, we merge it so that the merge can be, the writes can be merged and a single efficient write can be done. Then the third one is that of compiler optimizations. We have seen it many times. No amount of memory design or computer architecture is going to make a badly written code execute faster. So compiler optimizations and a better written program is one another optimization mechanism. Hardware free prefetch, it's like instruction cache and data cache are being prefetched by the hardware and placed so that the registers are available with the instruction and uh, data when needed. So I cache and D cache prefetched by the hardware. Then the last one is that of compiler prefetch. The instruction and the uh, data I cache and D cache are being pro populated by the compiler itself so that the data will be available. And this is linked to the compiler optimization that we have seen. So as it is, we have so many optimization advanced mechanisms that are available. But there are side effects to all of these optimization mechanisms. If we take the hit time, the bandwidth, the miss penalty, the miss rate, the power and the hardware cost associated with each of these optimization mechanisms, then there is a positive as well as a downfall in each of these mechanisms. In the case of simple sim first level cache, the miss rate is high but the hardware cost is low and the power and hit times are the positives. In the case of way prediction, there is a hardware cost associated with it. Pipeline cache access, the hit time is reduced because there is a pipeline that has to be taken care of. Non-blocking caches have a high hardware cost associated to it. Multibank caches, there is a hardware cost associated. The critical word first, there is also a hardware cost associated. By far, the best thing is the compiler optimization. Nothing can beat a well-written code. And then in the case of a hardware prefetch, the power associated with the hardware prefetching is high. And then the compiler prefetching is also the hardware cost is high. So these are the side effects that is there for each of the advanced optimization mechanisms. In the next video series, we'll see about the RAM and the virtual memory and how the memory is designed in virtual machines. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice week. Visit us at facebook.com slash openyan and write to us at ping at openyan.com and visit us at openyan.com. Bye.